What's up guys, this is Rissim from RossmoreTech.com. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Hopefully you guys are doing great too. Now you probably saw the title, Raspberry Pi locates aliens. How to locate aliens using a Raspberry Pi. Now what I'm gonna tell you is you can actually use a Raspberry Pi to locate aliens, to find aliens in outer space. I'm not kidding you, I'm not bullshitting you at all. You can actually use a Raspberry Pi to locate aliens. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Now the first thing you're gonna need, you need a Raspberry Pi. You're gonna need a SIM card. You're gonna need a way to power the Raspberry Pi. You're gonna need an Ethernet. I'm gonna use that internet so we can download some stuff on our Raspberry Pi. I'll show you all that in a second. But first, let me explain how this whole thing is gonna work. So I'm gonna open up the browser right here. Now, the first link here, this is Boink. Now this is Boink. This was created by Berkeley. Yes, Berkeley, the college, the famous college. And we're gonna use this to get this whole project started. The way Boink works, it uses your computer and millions of computers that are on their network and all these computers are helping with the cause. They're using their uh, resources, like their processing power, their GPUs, to uh, solve stuff. To solve stuff, and to basically solve stuff and then send it back to the server. The way it works, the point will send your computer, or in this case, a Raspberry Pi, a task. Your, your computer will solve that task and then send that information back to the point server. So this is a million, million computer operation. So this is using open source computer power to solve problems. In our case, we're gonna look for extraterrestrial activity. We're gonna find aliens using our Raspberry Pi. Now, to do that, is something called SETI at home. Now, the reason I chose this one is this is the program. What this does is it searches the sky for any extraterrestrial, non-human, non-planet Earth radio signals. If, if, they, if they find those radio signals, then they're proof that there are aliens out there. There are extraterrestrials out there. So I chose this program. We're gonna use Boink and SETI at home to search for extraterrestrials. We use a Raspberry Pi to help in that cause. Now, if you guys think this is cool, like this video. And hopefully you guys are participating with me of more computers or Raspberry Pis or devices that help with this cause, the faster we can find aliens. You wanna know if there are extraterrestrials out there? I do, I'm fascinated. So let's get started with this whole project. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is navigate to this URL. And by the way, all the URLs I show you in this video will be in the description. So we need to download Raspbian. So you're gonna navigate to this URL, www.raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. Click on this link for Raspbian. We want the Raspbian Jesse Pixel. I'm gonna download the zip here. It's gonna start downloading. I already downloaded mine, so I'm gonna cancel it right here. Once yours is finished, then we're gonna move on to the next step. So the next step, we're gonna to need to download this right here. It's Win32 Disk Imager. And navigate to here, click on Files, then click on Archive. All right, then click on the first one that you see. I'm gonna click on this and it should start the download. I already downloaded mine, so I'm not gonna need to do this. After you guys install it, it should look something like this. So I'm, I'm loading it up right now. So now we're waiting for our uh, image to finish downloading. I didn't download it because I already downloaded mine. Search for the image you just downloaded. It's Raspbian. I, this is mine here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not it. I have mine here in the desktop. Navigate to wherever you downloaded your Raspbian image, click on it, then click on open, right? And I'm gonna just minimize this here. Another thing I forgot to tell you guys, you need to have your SD card connected to the computer and your right drive letter has to be selected. Mine is selected, then you're gonna click on right. Then click on yes. Give it about like five to 10 minutes to finish writing on your disk. Once it's finished writing on the disk, it will say write successful. And I'll come back once that's finished. Once that's complete, it'll say right successful. So click on okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Raspberry Pi, you're gonna take that micro SD card, connect it to your Raspberry Pi, connect the power source, connect the internet, and also connect the USB mouse and keyboard to that Raspberry Pi. Power on the Raspberry Pi and we should move on to the next step. All right guys, after you powered it on, it should load to the operating system right now. This is the graphical user interface. Now I'm using something called Type VNC Server. I'm remotely accessing the graphical user interface using my PC. If you guys want to figure out how to do that, I have a video and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Basically in that video, it'll show you how to use PuTTY and how to remotely access your Raspberry Pi using Type VNC Server. So this is the graphical user interface. I'm just remotely accessing my Raspberry Pi right now. I'm not connected to an actual physical monitor, so that so I thought that was cool. And it's a cool way for me to record the screen without like having a camera pointed at my monitor while Raspbian is loading. So this is the cool, interesting way to do it. All right, guys, the first thing we're gonna need to do is I'm gonna move this aside so you can see here. 
I got some commands here on the right. sudo app get update, sudo app get upgrade, and we're gonna install Boink, so sudo app get install Boink. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. But click on this here, open up the terminal. Let me see if I can expand this, make it a little bit bigger. Can we make it bigger? Uh, yeah. Can I change the fonts? Uh, preferences. Let's do fonts. I want to make it a little bit bigger so we can read. Let's make the font as big as we can possibly do it. Like, let's do 64. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Is that too big? Eh, that's too big. Let's change it. We're almost there. So, uh, where are we at? Tab. Uh, so we're at edit preferences again. Now, let's do it in the middle. Let's do it like 40. Okay. Okay. I think that's better, right? So you guys can see it. And now we should be good. Copy this code here, sudo app get upgrade. So I'm gonna type in here, S-U-D-O A-P-T uh, hyphen G-E-T update. Then hit enter. It's gonna start updating. It should take like two to three minutes. Once that's finished, I'm gonna come right back. All right guys, while wow, that was while that was updating, I changed the font to 28, so it's much better and you can have more text on the screen. So while that was doing that whole update thing, I changed the font one more time to 28. So this is the happy medium right here. Now, the next thing we need to do is sudo app get upgrade. The hit enter. Now this one's gonna take a while. It might take like 10, 15, 20 minutes. If click on yes, hit enter. I don't know how long it's gonna take for you guys, but for me it was like 15 minutes. So you're gonna have to wait like 15 minutes for this part to finish. All right guys, once that's finished, we're gonna install Boink. All right guys, install Boink, it's pretty simple. Click on the menu over here, go to preferences, click on add or remove software. Then on the top of here, type in Boink, B-O-I-N-C, hit enter gonna search for the Boink software. All right, so I found the software right here. This is the manager. I'm gonna right click this here, click on install package, and click on apply. It should take about a minute or so to finish installing. All right, so finished with that, so we gotta click on this to exit it. Now we're gonna click on the start menu again. Now you should see system tools. Under system tools here, click Boink manager. Now I'm gonna click on add manager. Click next. We're gonna scroll down here until we see SETI. That's the program we're gonna run, SETI at home. So I'm scrolling down until I see SETI at home here. I'm gonna highlight it, then we'll click on next. Now it's gonna start communicating and getting a connection from SETI at home. If you're an existing user, you could click on this and type in your username and password, which is your email and password. But if you're a new user, you click on the first one. You type in your email address, and you're gonna type in a password. You're gonna confirm that password. You click on next, it's gonna to connect to a project. Found the project, and it says project has been successfully added, so we can click on finish. Now the screen popped up with the finishing the account setup. I'm gonna call mine. Ross Mertek, hyphen, seti at home. That's my name, Ross Mertek, and seti at home. Country is United States. My zip code is optional, I'm gonna leave it blank. Then I'm gonna click on okay. You guys type in your own name, and you click on your own location. If you want to type in your own zip code, I'm gonna click on okay. And I'm gonna skip this find a team thing. I'm just gonna close that out. Okay, so this is the Boink Manager, and it, we automatically started the SETI at home program, and it's running right now in the background. What I wanna do is I wanna change the view to advanced view, and advanced view, there are a lot of different tabs here. The first tab is basically notices from SETI at home with any like updates, they'll type it here. The second tab is projects. It's the project that we're working on right now. Raspberry Pi, as we speak, has started that project. It's gotten information from SETI at home, and it's processing that information. Then once it's finished, it's gonna send that process information to SETI at home. This is the task tab here. And you can see all the tasks that are running. We have this one task running right now. If you guys wanna find aliens using a Raspberry Pi, this is how we do it. We've successfully used our Raspberry Pi, installed the Boink Manager, set up SETI at home. Now our Raspberry Pi is successfully looking for aliens by scanning information that it gets that it gets from SETI at home. Once your information is completed, we send it back. Once we get that information, our Raspberry Pi is gonna process it. Once it finishes processing that information, it sends it back to SETI at home servers. That's how the whole thing works. So it's pretty cool. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. 
I'm Recip from Rossmartech.com and thank you guys for watching.